Hello, welcome back to the room I am standing in. This is the Techno Desk, the desk that does everything. Adorn your home with a wonderful piece of furniture that looks like an antique, but it's new. It's a, a new teak. Okay, before we get started, we broke this video into two parts, the demo and the construction. There's so much stuff that the Techno Desk does that it's gonna take a little time to walk you through all the magic that we have here. And then we're gonna walk you through how we built the wood structure and wired and everything else. Got it? Two parts, demo, construction. Ready, go. People ask us why we built the Techno Desk. Uh, the problem that I was solving with these desks is that my daughters would wait here by the front door for the bus every morning and they would not have their phones, they would not have their umbrella if it was raining, they wouldn't know what the weather was like, stuff was disorganized, we had um, phone chargers all over the house, so I decided I was going to combine all this stuff into a single unit, so we built the Techno Desk. The Techno Desk is just a, an oak desk with a lot of functionality in it, a lot of technology in it. The Techno Desk does quite a bit. Um, and it's been very popular, but we decided that we wanted to make it even better. Based on how we use it, we designed a new version. So you've just seen version one of the Techno Desk. Meet version three. We don't talk about version two. Now version three is made out of red oak and she's stained a slightly warmer color than the other one. Now this one is considerably larger, not crazy, but a little bit. So it's six inches wider, three inches deeper, and about two inches taller. And a lot heavier but she's absolutely fantastic and wonderful we're going to talk more about that we built three of these so let's start with these two drawers the whole idea of the drawers is to consolidate all of your electronics that end all over the house so the drawers are fairly large and they have felt on the bottom so that your electronics do not get all scratched up and i said electronics because there's a wall outlet inside each of these so pretty nice and this bottom one where you can also put electronics into it we have put a little vacuum cleaner so on the techno desk we have these two towers the other one we'll talk about later but this one is the charging tower we have these flashlights and the flashlights can be recharged using the usb provided and we also have portable batteries. We have the tube and the brick. The brick will recharge your phone about eight times. The tube will recharge your phone probably one time. If that, they're not as great. But either way, recharging stuff, super easy, super fantastic, and absolutely simple to grab, easy accessibility, fantastic. Now, some of you may have noticed that we have this pretty cool light here. It's a party light. It's activated by sound and it's cool for all of your party needs, but it's activated by this little toggle switch at the base of the tower. As we move our way down the tower, we will arrive at this four port USB charger. Now the charger is portable. You can take it wherever you need. Fantastic for trips with multiple people. You just plug in four phones like so. Please look at my sticker. I love my sticker. You just plug in your phone, plug in the USB, and look at that, you're good to go. We also have cables to charge our batteries. Pretty simple, you just plug it in here and then plug it in over here and we're good to go, it's charging. Now, while I put this stuff away, let me talk about the rest of these controls. We have three toggle switches over here. This one, we'll talk about in a little bit. It's pretty exciting. The middle one, we've already discussed, is the cool party light. And this third one is 
super, super cool because, well, it depends on how you define cool. I think it's cool. But you turn it on and there's blue LEDs that shine down through this glass pane. And you ask, why do you have LEDs shining down through there? Well, obviously, that's where we keep our Wi-Fi router. So you can look down through this glass pane and see your Wi-Fi router whenever you want. It's like an aquarium, but it's your Wi-Fi router. Now, you know when you have to unplug your Wi-Fi router and plug it back in to make the internet work again? Ugh, so annoying. We hate it, which is why we have this. This emergency stop button cuts all power down here to your Wi-Fi router. So when I hit it, haha, <laughs> just kidding. We got you. Now anyways, when you hit this button, it opens the circuit to 120 volt power that is going down here to your Wi-Fi router. And I know that it's 120 volt power, one, because I wired it, two, because of this cool voltmeter that tells you exactly how much voltage is going through at the same time. So when I hit this button, you can watch it go to zero. I unhit it, 120. It's a fun game I like to play. Now you may be wondering what these flashing lights are for. Well, in the original version of the desk, we did not have flashing lights. We just had an emergency stop button similar to this one. We had an issue where people would just hit the button like that and say, oh, my Wi-Fi, it's fixed. When in actuality, you need probably 10 seconds around that time to completely shut down your Wi-Fi router. These lights are here to distract you so that you hold the button for longer. You say, oh, wow, look at these cool looking lights and it tricks you so that your wi-fi router can completely restart this is a weather radio it lets you know when you have impending weather doom coming in on you now the weather radio as you can see is below this actual antique from the 1920s. This thing is almost a hundred years old. Now you may be thinking, wow, that's a wonderful decoration. You'd be wrong, we actually use it. Now the weather radio came with its own speaker, but what we did is we rewired the radio, put a modern speaker into this base, and then it interfaces with this literal antique to give us our weather updates. We built this brass part because this just came with the horn, we did not come with the base. So, custom job, really cool. But it lets you know when your weather comes, it's very loud. All right, welcome to me sitting on the floor. Now you may see that this is lighting up with my voice. Hello, this is called a Luma disc. Now, remember when I mentioned on the, on the charging tower, how there's that toggle switch we're gonna talk about later? We're talking about it now. What it does is it allows this to be on or off. So if you're watching a really loud movie and you just really don't want a pulsing beacon of light every time there's sound, off. You have a dog that barks really loud and you hate seeing the, off. Ah, ah, see, it's different. I hope you all like this design because I also like it too. What it is, is you have a series where you have solid, hollow, solid, hollow, solid, hollow, solid, because this has to hear you somehow. So if this was just a solid face, there'd be no way for it to pull, so it would just be dead all the time. So we had to come up with a way to allow sound waves to go through while also protecting this from people who probably shouldn't be touching it. Now, some of you may be saying, wow, this is a really cool panel, but you'd be wrong. As you can see by this knob, it's a drawer. So this is a giant drawer. And the reason why is because this is where we put our mail. We bring our mail in from outside, dump it in here, and it's good to go. We have a pirate cutlass letter opener. There's a pencil inside and huge amounts of storage. Now I want to direct your attention to the bottom of the techno desk. And you may be saying, wow, what a beautiful panel. You're wrong again, but in a nice polite way. You take this off and you pull out your umbrella. There's PVC pipe that runs all the way to the back of the desk. So you can put your umbrella inside of it without worrying about it hitting any kind of electronics. This is just the bottom of a, of a sink drain that we put an outside spigot on. And there's four tubes, but one umbrella because that's just kind of how we roll around here. Now I mentioned earlier about how this desk is physically wider than the other one. And that also pertains to this drawer. 
We call this the dog drawer because this is where we put our dog leash. We also included this little partition to keep things where we want them to be. Now, this was not in the original design because it wasn't wide enough. We thought about putting two more umbrella slots, but this just kind of works better. And it's a really cool drawer. I've never seen one like this. Now, some of you may have noticed this cabinet door at the beginning. And I have to warn you, the contents of it may scare you for the rest of your life. You've been warned. It's a trash can. Why do you have a trash can in this desk? And especially at this weird place where you can't even throw trash into it. Well, that's because we have a 15 page shredder. To use a shredder, you have to put the paper into the top. You see its beautiful face here, but to access the top, you open this trap door. Now there is a string of red LEDs along this front area by the piano hinges, which allows you to see where you're putting the paper in. And it shreds paper with ease. So this is the alert tower. It has four different types of alerts. We have one, two, three, four. We're gonna talk about all of them. This one is a red LED and it's connected to the weather radio. When the weather radio detects an alert, the red light turns on and it tells you to run because you've got weather coming. This green one is connected to the shredder door. When it is opened, that means that it's time to shred. It's pretty nifty. And this blue one is sort and that's for the mail drawer. It turns on when the drawer has been opened. In this one, there is a sensor out in the mailbox and when the mailbox is opened, this will have a color changing LED, as you can see, which means we have mail. And to reset that, you just hold this button. And here we have this little pocket where we have little note cards to write notes. We've got some cool Atomic Dairy business cards. Wow, these are pretty sick. We've also got pencil, a pen, and an X-Acto blade. And that's, this is to open packages when they come to the house. So now you have seen the functionality of the techno desk, but you may be wondering, man, all of these things require power. Where does it come from? Well, let me show you the wiring behind the techno desk. Wow, it sure is a mess. This desk is a little more messy than the other two because we tested everything on it first. So there's longer wire leads, which led to the whole thing looking more cluttered, but it does everything else that the other two do. Now this is the power control junction. Before I discuss everything that it does, let me turn it off so I don't hurt myself. We have two power strips where this one is plugged into this one via this cord. This is nine volt power and this is three volt power and these both power most of the LEDs and a lot of the, the smaller jobs in the control towers. This goes to the Luma disc. This one is for the weather radio. This one's for the shredder. Uh, this one's a drawer, this one's a drawer, and this one is the charging tower. And what these two do, I forgot to mention, is you have the three volt and the nine volt and the three volt goes to this box and then this box has a wire that leads to the spaghetti and then this nine volt has a wire that also leads to the spaghetti. Now this looks like an absolute utter mess but I promise there's some logic to all of this. So you see this and these ones are, everything is labeled because I was really meticulous about that. This says nine volt red and it says nine volt red right here is a connector because you can actually take the top off of the techno desk, which means everything up top needed to be able to be disconnected from everything down here. So there's connectors to every single thing. And if there's not, you can just unplug them from the power strip below. Now this is the alert tower. Let me show you the wiring. This comes off with a felt strip that holds the whole thing in with friction. It's a little weathered, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much because we don't take it off all that often. 
Now to give you a general layout, here's the three LEDs. We've got red, green, and blue for weather radio, shredder, and the mail drawer. And you can see the wires that come out of it and go down into the hole. You also see this one, and it says sound. This is supposed to go with this wire, which is for the mailbox. We were originally going to have a whole sound card and make these really cool sound effects, but we ended up scrapping that design, but we already had the wires laid out, so they're just hanging out. Here's the chip that talks to the mailbox, that talks to the LED, which is right in here, that lets you know when your mail has arrived. This is the reset button for that. And this is the antenna that lets you, that, that connects to the, to the sensor out in the mailbox. It's all really compact, it's all really crazy, and it all looks crazy, but I promise you, it works really well. So now, we are at the charging tower. Now, I'm gonna take the top off, but I can take these batteries off first, because it's the same little felt trick as the other one, but there's more wobbly things. And it cannot go as far forward as the other one because the party light's lead goes into this 120 volt outlet. And this 120 volt outlet goes to the same one for the Wi-Fi router, which is directly below this area. So when you use the kill switch, it also kills this. Now these tubes, you can see pretty easily, are for the USB wires for the front. Just a nice little storage caddy. And you have this wooden housing that's a little difficult to see, but here it is, and it has the single 120 volt power source for the, for, for the four USB charger dock. And you can see the wires go to that here. And you can see there's this little rabbit hole where the spaghetti mess originates from. Remember how I said earlier how there's lots of extra wires? This is really what I was talking about, is this is an absolute and utter mess, but it makes sense. We have this little board down here kind of difficult to see, but here she is. And this drives the six dancing LEDs that turn on when you hit the kill switch. Here's the kill switch in question. It has an always open and an always closed section on it. So the always closed is for the 120 volt uh, power and the always open is, re is reserved for these. Now these take nine volts of power. The Wi-Fi router takes 120 volts of power, so there's lots of levels of power over here. There's also actually three volt power in here too because of a failed design that we were gonna put in here with some cool motors, but it didn't work out, but there's three volts floating around. This is the voltmeter, and it has the leads going from, from this to, to this prong and then to this one. Also, this is off, which is why I'm not dead, but <laughs> it's kind of a mess but it's an organized mess that works. So here you can see the drawers, and both of the drawers have 120 volt outlets in them, and they both have leads that go, and they, they had to be a little longer so you could open the drawer, which was difficult to figure out, and there's a little too much slack over here, but it's fine. We also have, as I mentioned before, the three volt power that's just kind of hanging out. It's got the little wire cap so that nothing happens, but it's still wired over here, so if we want to make changes in the future, we absolutely can. So here we have the mail drawer. Again, very large bucket for mail. Now as you open it, also you just see a lot of wires. These three go to the weather radio hangout. But as you push this open, you can see this wire at the bottom that goes to the Luma disc, and you can also see this little limit switch. This goes to the blue LED in the, in the alert tower that says, oh, mail, you're sorting your mail. So now I gotta talk about the Wi-Fi bay, which is behind the left panel. Now it's kind of dark in here, so I grabbed one of the flashlights from on top of the desk to kind of help illuminate the situation. Here's our Wi-Fi router, and here's the outlet. You can see the spaghetti junction kind of over here to the right. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's fine, it works. But your Wi-Fi router just plugs in right there, and there's also a place to plug in something else if you so choose. And if you see over here, more to the front, I'll help you out, we have these batteries. Now, why do you need batteries? Well, they're for the weather radio, so whenever power is, is lost, like we get a power outage throughout the city, uh, the weather radio will still work, and it can still work for us. Okay, so here's the back of the weather radio with the antique speaker off and the base off. Now you can see that the actual 
radio itself is held in with brass strips that are screwed into the, into the wood up top. This is to the speaker that we've put inside of the base. Pretty neat. This goes to the red alert light. This is power, and this goes to the backup batteries. So now let's talk about the red lights under the shredder. And also you can see the little green light turned on because that's just ah, very good. We love that. But you can kind of see the red lights reflected onto my hand. But what shows that better is a white sheet of paper. You can kind of see it. There it is. And it helps you find the mark, which is this long line. And you say, ah, oh, my paper, I must shred it. I can see where it is. It's the Technodesk. All right, that's the end of the demo. The Technodesk sure does a lot. Now we're gonna show you how we built it, but we're not gonna do a step-by-step -step because we'd be here all day and you've already been here for 20 minutes. So we're gonna do a photo montage to show you what we did during the construction. You'll also see the construction of this shop because the Techno Desk drove us to build a dedicated wood shop so we could find our tools. So enjoy. So now you've met the Techno Desk. This is my favorite project we have done by far. All the wiring times three, all the designing times three, oh my goodness. And things kept failing over and over and over again, but it was so cool when we figured out how to fix the problem and how to do something even better for the final product. Easily, I already said it, but easily my favorite projects we have ever done. But is it, is it overbuilt? overpowered and kind of ridiculous? Absolutely, that's kind of what we do around here. If you want to see more videos of things like this, uh, may I direct your attention to the Dome of Destiny, where the video link is down below, and also in this icon that you can click conveniently right here. But if, this, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss an upload. But anyways, thanks for watching. See you later.